Are you a consultant or coach that wants to get started with YouTube ads? In this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process to get leads and sales for your business with YouTube advertising. Before we get into this video, I'll provide you a secret video scripting guide with all the info you need to script killer video ads for your business. So if you want to have access to this guide, which will teach you how to shoot and script seven figure video ads, comment script below in the comment section and our team will reach out and send you this PDF. So comment script below in the comment section and you'll get that right over to you. Now I'm going to show you our exact process that has helped us generate over eight figures with YouTube ads for high ticket info products, high ticket done for you and more. For example, this client over here, we generated over $7 million over the course of working with them. And then this client over here, we made over a million dollars in a single month with YouTube advertising for them. So keep watching, this might be the most important video for your business that you've seen in 2021 and let's get right into it. Make sure to smash the subscribe and like button and hit the notification ring so you can get more videos like this and be the first to know ahead of your competition. So why YouTube, right? A lot of people ask me this. One of the reasons why we love YouTube ads is because of the massive volume of highly qualified leads on the platform. One of the reasons YouTube works great for high ticket programs is the fact that the leads are often in education and learning mode. So a lot of people use YouTube to go and watch tutorials, how to videos, inspirational case studies and more, right? Like you're here on YouTube right now watching a video on YouTube ads. So if I ran an ad to you, you would be probably pretty interested in YouTube advertising, right? So it's really important to understand that on Facebook, people are often in consumption mode, while on YouTube, they're often in education and learning mode. And YouTube is a huge platform. It's the world's second biggest search engine. And because of the huge amount of time people spend on YouTube, it's an amazing place to advertise so you can scale to really high levels. One of the interesting things about YouTube is also that you'll get a higher conversion rate on your leads from YouTube. So for example, over here, as you can see for this client, we had a significantly higher return on ad spend with YouTube ads than with Facebook ads. So that's one of the reasons why YouTube is so powerful. One cool thing about YouTube is that the video ads and the video aspect of the platform allows you to pre-sell people before they go to the landing page. So this allows you to build a connection, get them excited and get them hyped to go through your content and basically consume what you're providing them. So for example, if you have a video ad where you just build a strong connection, they'll go to your landing page and opt in at a higher rate and then they'll book a call at a higher rate because you've already pre-framed the expectation that, hey, this person is an expert and I need to listen to what they say. On the other hand, if you have a really boring ad, you could have an amazing VSL, but people are gonna come into that with the expectation that, hey, the first impression wasn't that good and at the first opportunity they have, they'll drop off. With YouTube video ads, you also have a hard chance of building a really strong long-term connection. So even if they don't convert now, they may convert six months, eight months down the line. That means that there's often a higher chance of going viral with your YouTube ad. Like we went viral with one of our clients, Kino Body, where we were basically able to help him blow up with YouTube ads and also get into Vice Magazine and grow his subscriber base. So YouTube can often help with becoming well-known and famous in your industry. Now let's talk about how you can script and YouTube ad. So this is really, really important because this is going to make a massive difference as to your results. The ad is one of the most important pieces of the YouTube advertising game. A really great ad will often do the heavy lifting in getting people to convert into your funnel and to actually even buy your product. So we like to follow a structure for our ads, right? The first piece of this puzzle is the hook. So what the hook is, is the first five to 10 seconds of your ad where you grab their attention. Now on YouTube, people can skip after five seconds. So you have five seconds to really make a strong impression. So you wanna make sure that you really open strongly. So you can either do something like an action, right? So we have clients who've done things like opening the ad with, hey, hey, stop, stop, stop. I wanna show you something, right? Getting their attention right from the get go. Then we have other clients who will tell them, hey, I wanna show you something and then show basically a screenshot or some sort of result and get their attention immediately. Or you could also say a controversial statement. For example, if I wanted to sell YouTube ads, a controversial statement would be, did you know that YouTube ads are most often way more profitable than Facebook ads, right? So that's a controversial statement because some people are gonna be disagreeing with that. They're gonna see evidence for it. They're gonna want to see proof for it. So they're going to be interested in watching more of the ad to really understand it. 
Now, the second piece is that you want to build some sort of credibility. So this often means telling them that, hey, I've helped over 1 million people achieve financial freedom, or hey, I've educated 10,000 students on this process, or I've been featured in Forbes magazine, or I'm a board certified doctor, etc. right? So whatever credibility and authority you have, whether it be credentials, the number of people you've helped, you may want to just drop that in after the hook. So let's say you've gotten their attention, you tell them why should they trust you, and now they trust you and they're also interested. Now you get into the actual offer that you're making. So you describe the offer and the benefits. So for example, if I'm doing a free training for YouTube ads, what I'll do is I'll tell them, hey, I just made a free training on how to scale your YouTube ads. Click the link above or below to get the training where I teach you how to scale your ads, how to make your video creative, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm telling them this is the offer. So it's a free training, it's a PDF, it could be your product, whatever it is you're basically telling them what it is and giving them the benefits. So not the features, but the benefits. So what they're going to learn that's gonna help them. So it could be something like learn how to scale your ads 2x faster or learn our secret process for scripting seven figure video ads, right? So that is a lot more appealing than something that's much more vague when you tell people specifically what they're gonna learn. Now you want to make sure there is a call to action very early on. So it could be perhaps right after you tell them what you're offering. It could even be while you're telling them what you're offering, but you want to tell them that, hey, click the link above or below to access this free training, to take the quiz, to do whatever you want them to do, right? Because each funnel is different, so you're gonna have to, a different step after they click on your ad, but you want to tell them specifically what you want them to do after they click that ad. So once you get that first call to action and you want to give people more meat, so you will want to get deeper into detail into your training, right? So for example, if I'm doing a YouTube ads training, I might tell them a little bit more about our process, give them a little bit more meat and a little bit more uh, juice so that they're interested in actually going through the full training. So this is the portion of the ad where you can go a little bit more in depth and go specifically into what you're going to teach them. And in this portion of the ad, you could also address common objections, right? So if people have objections like, hey, I don't know if this is going to work for me because I don't know how to write great video ads, you might say, and this will even work for you even if you've never written a video ad or shot an ad before. In fact, you don't even need to be in the ad. So you can basically address those objections in that portion of the ad as well. At a certain point, you'll want to add social proof in. So you'll want to add in client results or even testimonials. So for example, for testimonials, you could literally have them scroll down on half of your screen while you're talking in the other half part of the screen. Or you could splice in a little 10 second testimonial clip from one of your clients. So at a certain point in the video, it could be earlier on, it could be later on, you want to make sure you have social proof of actual students or clients that you worked with. And you'll want to make sure you have multiple call to actions. I typically recommend at least two call to actions. Sometimes you'll even have three. So as I mentioned again, you tell them specifically what to do, where to click and get them over to the next page. After that, you may want to add in a couple more, let's say objections that you didn't have a chance to address. But realistically at this point, you're pretty much done with the ad. You'll add a countdown timer at the end. So once you're done talking, have a timer, which is basically counting down. So it gives them a little bit extra time to click on the ad because sometimes people wanna see the whole ad and then they forget to click on it and now they're like, oh, I missed the ad. So that's important to do. Just give them a countdown timer at the end so they basically have some time to click on it. So yeah, guys, that's how you script an ad. Um, let's now talk about how you shoot an ad. So one of the keys to shooting a great ad is tonality and being engaging. So what that means is you don't want to be monotone. You don't want to shoot an ad being like, hi, do you want to get my program? No, you want to be exciting. You want to be interesting. You want to be fun. And the thing is, for example, in this video right now, I'd say I have a 6.5 or 7 out of 10 energy level. For an ad, I would actually increase my energy level where I'd be a lot more animated, I'd be using a lot more hand signals, and I would speak faster. So essentially, you want to modulate your speaking and get it to be at a higher level for the ad. Obviously, this isn't easy if you've never done it. The way you do this is you literally have your ad script written down and just practice for, maybe practice it eight to 10 times. Maybe have the camera on your computer on just so you can see what you're, what you're doing in terms of your facial expressions, in terms of the way you speak, et cetera. And the goal is to kind of basically improve on certain things. So you might, in the first five takes, focus on really speaking faster because sometimes if you speak really slow, it can make it sound boring. 
And then in the next five, you may want to modulate your tonality, right? So you may want to speak fast sometimes, and then at other times you may want to speak slower, and that creates emphasis. So ultimately, it's not too hard. If you spend an hour practicing the delivery of your ad, your ad will literally be two to three X better. And that's not a lot to ask to be able to potentially make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars with YouTube ads, right? It's, it's not that much work. And it blows my mind because sometimes clients will be so lazy about it where they'll shoot an ad and it's just, you can tell that all they did was just turn on their camera and shoot an ad, right? You do need to spend some time practicing this. And if you don't feel confident about your advertising skills, spend an hour, maybe get a speaking coach and practice with them for a couple hours and your ads will improve, right? Even with two or three hours, you can improve your delivery skills on your ads, make them way more engaging and just be a much better speaker. And that's huge with YouTube ads. People are on YouTube to be entertained, to be engaged, they don't wanna watch boring ads. And now in terms of the actual shooting, right? So if you're shooting an ad and you're a coach or consultant and basically you're, you, ha you are the face of the business, in that case, it's pretty easy. You can do a couple things. Number one, you can use your iPhone and do a selfie style ad. And number two, you can hire a videographer and basically like this, you can have a more professional ad. There's nothing wrong with doing an iPhone or an ad with a selfie camera. Just make sure that the audio is good, you're in a quiet place and you have good lighting because sometimes people shoot ads and they'll, you know, the audio is horrible, right? Like don't shoot ads on an iPhone on the beach. You need like a specialized mic for that. But on the other hand, if you're in an environment like this, you can easily just pull out your phone and just shoot hair and it's gonna sound great. It's gonna look great because the lighting is pretty good. So it'll work out quite well. So those are a couple of shooting tips. Now in terms of editing, what you want to do is to make the ad more engaging, you want to add in some B-roll or you want to add in perhaps some basic animation. So you want to add in little uh, basically elements to the ad. So for example, if you're talking about an ad and let's say you're in the internet marketing space, you're teaching people how to start an Amazon business. So adding in some B-roll footage when you're talking about, let's say working from home and showing somebody working from their house or from their beach villa, it's going to help with really helping people visualize what you're saying, right? Same thing with, you know, if you're talking about a pain point, right? So if you're selling a make money online course and you're talking about how much it sucks to have a nine to five, show somebody who's, you know, at an office desk in a suit and who looks really stressed. So you wanna be able to add in some visuals. Now, obviously, if you are not an editor, you can hire an editor to do this and give them the directions. Or if you do know how to edit, obviously you can do it yourself. But those are really, really important in terms of helping you shoot more engaging and better quality ads. A really good rule of editing that I got from Parker Walbeck is the 10 second rule. And basically what this rule says is that at no point in the video should there be 10 seconds without some sort of action happening on the screen, right? There needs to be either movement or some sort of edit or maybe a little animation, maybe some text on the screen, but you can't have 10 seconds without some sort of action going on. So that's a really good role to keep in mind when shooting these ads. Okay guys, now let's quickly talk about tracking. I'm not going to bore you guys with super technical tracking details, but I'm just gonna give you the basics that you need to be able to really get the tracking down. So the tools we're gonna use here, number one is the Google uh, Ads conversion tracking, and this is the basic conversion tracking that Google provides. Now you can use more advanced solutions. For example, I have a video to, on how to use Hyros. So if you look up Shash Singh Hyros, I talk about kind of the pros and cons of using Hyros, which is a tracking tool. Now, the basically with the tracking, what you essentially can do is you can set up conversions with Google Ads conversions. So you go to this tools and settings, you click on conversions, and then you will click the plus button. And usually it's gonna be a website conversion, right? So let's say you are, you can either do leads or you can, you know, for example, if somebody is opted in, you can put them as a contact, right? And if somebody purchases, you can put them as a purchase. Um, so for example, let's say they're a lead. So we'll call this lead opted in, right? Usually I don't use a value for leads and I click on this one, right? Because really the only, a person could opt in multiple times, but we really only count the first one. And yeah, we keep the click through and the view through at 30 days and one day, and you would click create and continue. Now at this point, there's a few options, right? If you have a web developer, you can email the tag, you can install the tag yourself 
which is the manual way. What I suggest is Google Tag Manager. So using Google Tag Manager allows you to really install tags really easily. So what Google Tag Manager is, it's basically a tool that allows you to place different tags and tags of things like the Facebook pixel, the Google uh, conversion tracking pixel, the Google remarketing tag. And with Google Tag Manager, you install it once on your website, right? So let's say you use ClickFunnels, look up how to set up Google Tag Manager on ClickFunnels set it up once and then you just go in here and you can basically add tags in here. So instead of go, having to go inside the website and then hard coding each conversion, each time you want to do it, you just go in here, add in a new tag. Let's say it's a Google Ads conversion tracking ad tag. And all you have to do, the two main things, you don't need value, you don't really need these either for uh, let's say a lead. All that you'll do is you'll go here, you'll copy conversion ID, bam, conversion label. It's just so easy with Google Tag Manager. And then you'll figure out the trigger. So if, for example, uh, usually you'll trigger a lead on the thank you page after they opt in. So you'll have an opt in and then you'll take them through a thank you page. So what you'll do is you'll add a new trigger and let's say visited thank you page for a lead, click here, page view, and only on some page views. And then you would do, um, okay, there's a lot of these here. And then you would add in, let's say, thank you page lead form. Now, obviously I'm not gonna save this because as you can tell, we have a pretty complex <laughs> tracking system. I don't wanna mess it up and um, get my tracking guy angry at me, but you get the idea, right? And same thing for a book call, right? It would be the same process. You would just let, put this on the thank you page for the book call. So that's a very quick, overview of tracking um, and how that works. Now let's talk about how to set up campaigns and the various targeting options with YouTube ads, right? So one of the cool things about YouTube ads is there's so many different targeting options. So I'm gonna show you how this whole thing works, right? So what you do is you click on a new campaign. You're gonna go click on either sales or leads. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. You're gonna click on video and you're gonna get this drive conversions. And you'll name your campaign, whatever you want to name it. Typically, I, I'll put in the targeting and the funnel I'm sending them to, as well as the name of ads I'm basically targeting. So, and also put in the date. So I'll do something like, put usually the date first, so it's easy to see. The bidding types, so there are two main bidding types you wanna keep in mind. There's target CPA and there's maximized conversion. So I'll put in something like target CPA, so that means that it's tar basically what Google's gonna try to do is get you conversions at a certain cost per conversion with target CPA. With maximized conversions, it's better for newer accounts, but it can cost more. So let's just say I'm gonna do target CPA to get started. Um, if you're just starting out, I would do maximized conversions. So, and then you would do, let's say your targeting options. So one targeting option could be YouTube advertising keywords, right? Let's say I'm gonna put in three ads into it. So I'll call this multiple ads because I'm gonna put three ads into this campaign. With target CPA, there's typically gonna be a bid. So I'm gonna put in a $20 target CPA. And that's, I'm kind of telling Google that, hey, I'm willing to pay $20 for a conversion. Now, it doesn't mean that conversions will come in for $20. A lot of times they can come in for lower. So it's something to keep in mind. This is where you set the daily budget. I typically will start campaigns at anywhere from 25 to $50, I'll put in $50. Typically, Google will tell you to spend a lot more budget. However, in my experience, it's better to start with a small budget. If a campaign goes well, you can always increase it, but it's always better to be a little bit more conservative. What you want to do here is you want to get rid of this right here. This is your location. I would just put in English if you're targeting the English market and inventory type, I like expanded because I don't really care if my ads show up in front of, you know, a violent video or whatever. For me, it doesn't make a difference. However, if you're working for a brand that really cares about that, I would choose standard or limited inventory. Now, you can also decide where you want to show up or not show up. Um, basically, these are content times to exclude. Typically, live streaming videos, might be a good idea to kind of block those because if people are live streaming something, people are not gonna want to really watch a long ad. And yeah, other than that, if you're trying to avoid showing in front of you know, mature audiences, you can do that. 
Typically, again, as I said, I don't really care too much, so I'll just have live streaming videos there. You can use these site link extensions. We've tested these. You'll want to make sure that you, basically you can't send them to the same page you're sending your ad to. Um, so if your ad URL is, let's say, um, linksdigitalagency.com slash case study, you can't send them to the same URL. So what you could do here is you could send them to a frequently asked questions or tips and tricks or another page that's kind of relevant and then you can get a higher click-through rate with this. So site link extensions can often work quite well if you know what you're doing with them. So this is a product feed. Um, you can show basically products with your ads. This is more for an e-commerce feature. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing e-commerce. I'll usually do account level conversion settings. I may exclude TV screens because it's kind of hard to click on TV screens. You know, you can't really click on them. So I exclude TV screens typically, unless you're just, let's say you're retargeting, then targeting TV screens makes a lot of sense, right? Because you want to kind of remind them even if they can't click at that moment, but you want to be top of mind. In terms of frequency capping, I will do this. I will typically put in, let's say in terms of impressions per day, three impressions per day, and then two per week. That's a decent number. It makes sure that, you know, your ads are not showing to the same people like um, bazillion times. And yeah, you can even have an ad schedule so you can decide when your ads show up. This is good for certain niches if you find that your ads don't perform in certain hours. Or for example, if you're, let's say, promoting some sort of bar and some sort of happy hour for a bar, right? Like obviously there's certain times where you're not gonna be really getting people interested in that while maybe on a Thursday at 5 p.m. people would be interested. For ad group type, so these are different formats. This is the standard, which is skippable in-stream ads, and then responsive can be uh, basically multiple, including in-stream as well as the responsive ads, uh, which are video discovery ads. So these, this can be get through good results, but you typically start out with standard, and then you can test this in a separate campaign at a later point if that works. And same thing here with your ad group name, you can name the ad group. Typically what we'll do is we'll have one campaign, one ad group, and three to four different ads in there. So the demographics also are a really useful option here. So if, for example, if you're selling a high ticket info product, you're probably gonna not sell to 18 to 24 year olds, and you probably want to exclude the lower 50% of household income. So we'll play around and test this, but typically we find for high ticket offers, we will either go top 30% or top 50%. And one thing to keep in mind is that household income is only in certain countries. And it's really a lot more accurate in the US, you know, in certain countries like Brazil, for example, it's, it's there, but it's not as accurate. Now with YouTube, there are a bunch of different targeting options, right? So you have a lot of these audiences. So with audiences, you have multiple types, right? So there is remarketing and similar audiences. So this is basically YouTube's version of remarketing and lookalikes. So remarketing is basically, let's say people who've already interacted with your YouTube channel or your website or your email list, right? People you've uploaded. Um, the other option is similar audiences, which is people that are similar to other people who've taken action. So it's people who are similar to your YouTube viewers, people who are similar to uh, converters, people who are similar to, you know, website visitors. So that's kind of Google's version of lookalike audiences. We haven't had amazing success with them, but they were testing out, especially if you can layer them with something else to make them narrower. And then there are other types of audiences. Custom audiences work really, really well, right? So basically we'll create custom audiences based on other people in our industry. So an incredible custom uh, audience that you can use is custom intent audiences, which are basically based on what they're searching on google.com. So in our case, as you can see, if they're searching for YouTube advertising, we can target them on YouTube with that custom audience. So that's a really cool targeting idea. Optimized targeting is a new feature. What it does, it, it uses your landing page information, your website, etc., to help optimize your ads. You can disable this after. We haven't really tested this because it's a very new feature. So we're still kind of, the jury's still out on this. Now, there are more targeting options, right? There's um, actually even in audiences, there's a lot more audiences in here, right? So on top of these custom audiences, there's in-market and life events. So in-market is when they're searching for something. So for example, they could be looking for certain business services. So if you're, let's say, an staffing and recruitment company, there is an audience for people who are looking for staffing and recruitment services. So again, this is 
a really, really useful targeting option. Life events is also really powerful. You can target people who are looking at creating new businesses, look at people who just graduated college, people who are renovating their home or are going to renovate it, even marriage, moving, people who've gotten a new pet or a new cat or dog, people who are buying a home soon, right? So there's a cold mine of targeting options here. And then you also have other options like keywords where basically you target YouTube videos based on their metadata. So if a YouTube video has a certain title and you let's say put in uh, let's say e-commerce advertising, right? So YouTube will go out and find videos related to e-commerce advertising and show your ad in front of those videos. So that's one option. So topics are basically videos about certain subjects. So then YouTube will show your videos in front of certain topics. So as you can see, if I wanted to, I could click business and industrial, and then I can go down here and go into advertising and marketing. And then I can basically target people who are watching videos about email marketing or direct mail marketing. And there's so many of these. So there's like S SEO services, I believe as well. And then the last one is placements. So placements allows you to target channels and videos that are about specific targeting. So one really great tool we use is this tool called TubeSift. So you can log in here. You can actually put in a keyword and it will give you a bunch of videos about that topic. So let's say we want um, dieting tips for keto, right? Let's say you have a keto product that helps you lose weight, right? So now you have a bunch of videos that this is pulling up and you can customize this to show up to 300 results. So now you have a bunch of really popular videos that are about keto and weight loss and you can basically show your ad in front of these videos. That's incredibly powerful because you can literally, let's say you're selling a high ticket coaching program on how to scale your Amazon business. So let's say scale Amazon business. You can enter that keyword and now you're getting a bunch of videos that are all about scaling Amazon. It does take a little bit of time to pull up these results, but you can just let this run on the background. And once this is done, you all you do is get the links, cut, go into here, enter, paste, and then you have your placements. Now you're targeting videos about Amazon. Perfect. And then you would throw your ad in here. So let's say, um, I'm just gonna take one of my videos. So this is a video about the right gear for YouTube ads. So a few things there, right? This is the URL. So the final URL you're gonna send traffic to. This is the display URL. So this is what's gonna show up here. So basically this is the display URL right here. Call to action is what you're telling them to do. So it could be something like click here. The headline would be this over here. So perhaps pro YouTube ads. Okay, there we go, that fits in. And you can also have a banner that's auto-generated based on your channel art, or you can upload an image. It needs to be 300 by 60 pixels and up to 150 kilobytes. So you can actually have a companion banner. But yeah, that's basically how you set it up. And then you click create campaign and then you've created your first YouTube advertising campaign. So yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so once you've actually set up your campaigns and you have had a few days, then you'll want to look at your campaigns to see what performance is like. So I'm looking at one of my campaigns and one of the things you wanna look at is, let's say your cost per lead. If you're running a VSL funnel where you're sending traffic to VSL, you wanna understand your cost per lead and you wanna really aim for under, you know, $15 if you can. $20 okay, $15 is great. Uh, $10 and lower for high ticket coaching is awesome. Now, if you're in a niche like health and fitness, you'll probably want to be aiming for three to five dollars or if you're in a niche like music coaching, et cetera, right? So depending on your niche, your cost per lead could be anywhere from three dollars to like twenty five dollars, right? Uh, ultimately, what matters is how much revenue may you make from that lead. And that's why some niches are more expensive than others. Now, a few things you want to take a look at is I have also have a custom conversion set up for book calls and the book calls cost per acquisition. So. We're getting $173 per book call, which is I'm pretty happy with. And then a few other metrics you want to look at is if you click on this columns, you want to have a click through rate, you want to have cost per click and average cost per view. So those are also important to take a look at. The reason I like looking at click through rate is it tells me how well the ad is doing. So we're getting a 2.96% 
click-through rate, which tells me the ad is hitting with the audience and people like this video ad. Your, our cost per click is pretty high because this is a competitive niche. Average cost per view is also quite high because once again, this is a competitive niche, right? Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm decently happy with the performance of this campaign. So that gives you an idea of how to optimize your campaigns. Now from here, what you can do is you can go into the ad level uh, on this. In this case, we only have one ad, but if you have multiple ads, you can take a look at the, the performance of each ad and how they're doing. So in this case, if, for example, if you had three ads in here, you could pause one or two of them, the ones that are getting the higher cost per lead. So yeah, that's pretty much how to analyze your campaigns. And once you've got your first campaign set up, then all you have to do is just test more targeting options and test more ads. And then you're off to the races with YouTube ads and yeah, you could make it work quite well for you. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. That was a very brief introduction to YouTube ads for coaching and consulting. If you guys would like to learn more about how to run campaigns for your coaching or consulting offer, then there'll be a link below in the description to sign up for a demo of my YouTube ads training program, which is literally 20 hours of training on how to do exactly this. And a lot of coaches and consultants have gone in there, like Boyd Hare, who's making five grand a day doing selling high ticket info products. So if you're interested, there'll be a link below. And once again, thanks for watching the video. And another great video to watch is this video here, where I actually have a case study on how we actually helped a certain in high ticket coaching company do over a few million dollars with YouTube ads, including a million dollars in a single month. So that will be somewhere here to go watch that video.